Hey everyone, my name's Captain Jack and welcome back to Trek Central. In this week's interview, we sat down with Ben Robinson to talk all about the upcoming items to Hero Collector's official Star Trek Starships collection, as well as learn a bit of insight from Ben himself about what goes into making these starships and the entire process of designing things. Also, what's upcoming with the giant Build Your Own Enterprise D collection, which you might be able to soon see here on the channel and via our website, trekcentral.net. Enjoy this interview where I learn a lot about Hero Collector and the Starships collection from Ben himself. Let us know what you think about it down below in the comment section, and as per usual, enjoy the video. Awesome, so to start off, um, would you be able to give me a bit of intro about yourself, what you do at Hero Collector, and how you came to be at Hero Collector in a way? Okay. So, my name is Ben Robinson. I am the head of Hero Collector, uh, whatever that means. Um, in fact, what that means is that I look after uh, all of our products, whether that's Star Trek, Doctor Who, Marvel, DC, Game of Thrones, the list goes on and on and on, uh, Back to the Future, Ghostbusters. Uh, and I, I'm roughly in charge of everything. Uh, a lot of other people do a lot of the real hard work. Um, but I make a lot of the decisions and I get to choose what we do. Plain and simple. I like in it. Of, <laughs> yeah, no, it makes it sound like <laughs> I have all the fun. Um, in terms of how I got here, um, I started work on the Star Trek Fact Files. 24 years ago now, my God, help me. Um, and I've worked for companies that do this kind of thing ever since. I mean, really, there have been three different iterations of the company being sold around me. Um, I've always been here, always been doing the same thing. The company's changed, not me. Um, so I'm fortunate enough that I get to do this for a living. Fantastic. Honestly, it's, it's interesting to hear. Like, I remember we've spoken before about your background um, through various things of Star Trek. It's interesting to see where you've ended up now and where you've come from in a way. It's like a fantastic like experience, I'd say. Yeah, I mean, it's been it's been an interesting one. So we started out, I mean, when I, when I joined the Fat Files, I think we thought it would last, you know, could only last six months, could have lasted, you know, I think it was due to last uh, two years at the time. So I was thinking, oh, yeah, I've got two years work, working on Star Trek. That would be great. Uh, 24 years later, <laughs> um, here we are. Um, and then because the fact was a success, I got to do the magazine in the US. So for five years, I was able to uh, contact anybody I wanted in the world of Star Trek and talk to them about stuff, which was a great privilege. That's fantastic. Made a lot of friends that way. Um, and then had, yeah, then, then we carried on doing bits and pieces with that. So I think that must have been lasted, that lasted seven years. Um, and then I did a lot of other stuff in between for kind of the same company. So I did uh, Doctor Who, did Doctor Who Trading Cards, which was a big, big hit. It was a big, exciting success for me. Um, did the build up Goldfinger DB5, did a massive collection of James Bond, uh, James Bond cars, did a lot of DVD licensing. Um, uh, what else? Yeah, lots of other stuff in the meantime. And then um, we came back and then launched the Star Trek ships, which, you know, obviously it's not the only thing I do, but has been one of the big successes of the last 10 years, I guess. Uh, I think the Star Trek ships collection has been running for quite some time now. Like I remember easily six, seven years ago, seeing the first DS9 model in, I think, WH Smith for like £20. I remember picking that one up all those years ago. It's still on my desk somewhere at the minute. And it's like, oh, it's been running for years absolutely. now. Yeah, I mean, I think we, well, we, we finished the main subscription at um, 180 issues and there would be 26 a year. So that would be seven years. It's a bit more than seven years ago now. Definitely. It launched. And obviously I had been working on it for uh, actually, I think three years before it actually launched. So yeah, it's, it's been a big, big chunk of my life. Definitely. Uh, 10 years, 10 years. Yeah. And it's been massively successful now. And I suppose um, to lead into the next question, multiple spin-off collections have been launched from the, from the initial Star Trek Starships collection. Of course, we've got the Picard one um, or mm. Picard ships coming later this year. I was wondering if you could tell me a bit about that collection and how it's going into the overall Star Trek universe sort of brand at the minute, isn't it? Yeah. So, we, well, what's happened is we're allowed to call a subscription. We wanted to have a subscription that covered um, Picard, Discovery Season 3, Strange New Worlds. I mean, it would also cover Discovery Season 4. Um, so more than it, it was just kind of like oh should we just call it another Star Trek collection <laughs> so that's where the universe name came from that makes sense um, but there will be and it's a term that um, CBS used to describe the modern shows um, but we continue to do so it, it is basically Picard and Discovery and Strange New Worlds uh, and then sitting outside that a little bit will be lower decks 
Fantastic. I know a lot of people are looking forward to the Starship Picard collection. Of course, some of the concept mm. models have been revealed, and I think the next one's out. Is the Last Serena is out in February, is it? Or just about in March? Uh, I think the Last Serena will actually ship in March, April. First week, I think it's due to go out in the first week or so of April. Not too long, um, then. So, but not long at all. No, it's done. Um, uh, we have it. We've photographed it. It's, it's all ready to go. It looks great. I mean, it's... Um, you know, some things really lend themselves to being models, and that's one that does. Um, and then, yeah, we have, I think, 10 Picard ships before we get to Discovery. And that's going to be a lot of ships. And there's a lot of, like, fan favorites people are looking forward to. The big one I have there to are. ask about, obviously, is the Inquiry class or the USS Zheng He, um, which is obviously Riker's ship in the end of Picard. That's an interesting one. And I wonder if you could possibly hint towards how that model came to be, etc. Because that ship appeared at the end of Star Trek Picard, a little bit controversial because there's so many of it in some way. Not, not mm-hmm. everyone was keen yes. on that, but what did you think of that one in a way? Because I bet that's an interesting ship to bring to model life as well. Yeah, I mean, I know that that ship got got added to the, the story very late in the day. Um, and it had originally been designed as something else. So, you know, I think if the thing you, you tend to realise when you work on these things is how much the story evolves as things are going. Definitely. So... I think if they had known that uh, the series was going to end with this massive armada of Starfleet ships turning up, they probably would have made more of an effort to to make sure the ships were varied and different. But the decision to to have that happen came quite late in the day. So there are actually four variants of Hmm. of the Inquiry class in that fleet, Um, two physical ones and, and two... Uh, paint ones and then obviously there are lots of different registry numbers and that kind of thing um so yeah it's one of those ones that sort of came about quite late in the day and was originally planned as something else um i know they've been talking about how they can introduce more starfleet ships in in, uh, season two I, I think that was one of the big sort of like riffs on like the hardcore Starship fan. I know I'm one of them out there. Every week I was like, when are they going to show Picard's Odyssey class? Come on. They gave it to us in a comic. Just show it on screen and I'll die happy. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, Picard is a, I mean, you know, it started off as a, a one season thing and now mm. they're looking at it as a three season arc, as, yeah. as I understand it. Um, so th- there were lots of, there were lots of good things they wanted to get to that they held back on. So they weren't, it wasn't all there from the word go. The card is definitely a lesson in patience. You know, they're uh, like, well, yes, just wait, you'll get to that bit, wait, you'll get there. I think it comes uh, down to like the different pacing between series as well. Like Picard is more, I'd say, laid back and like patience in a way, whereas like you could say Discovery is rather fast paced and straight to the point. And I think it's nice to have that differentiation between the shows sometimes because you want more like to sit down and relax. Picard mm. may be your option. If you want something more fast paced, Discovery is your option as well. Yeah, I think that's a, I mean, a big part of what they're trying to do with the modern Star Trek shows is to give each one its own distinct flavour. Definitely. So, you know, I know that they, they see Discovery as an action show, whereas Picard is a bit more contemplative, you know, it's a bit more philosophical. So, you know, they're trying to make sure there's something for everybody. Obviously, Lower Decks is, you know, a joke here, um, <laughs> and, and packed with Easter eggs. So, Definitely, and yeah. strange new worlds will be different again. So, and, you know, I think it's important that Star Trek doesn't just try to make uh, countless episodes of the same thing. Um, you know, um, so I'm looking forward to seeing these kind of different iterations and, and different time periods now as well, of course. Definitely as well. Different time periods. I remember when we sat down um, at DST in 2019 now, where it was like we speak about the idea of a strange new world show, and here we are planning you know hopefully it's going to be released soon you've got a collection on the way or some ships as a part of a universe collection as well so can you tell us anything about that so far anything to tell about what ships may be coming obviously i imagine the enterprise will be one of them maybe it's a little early on strange new worlds yeah Yeah. i mean they they've started work i know they've been in pre-production um they're not at the point where they have anything that they can give us um you know obviously it's episodic which mm. is interesting. You know, it, it sounds very much like the kind of uh, the modern version of the original series. You know, I think that is their goal with it. Um, but certainly if that's what, what we end up with, I'll be very happy. But yeah, I don't know anything. I don't know anything about the ships from Strange New Worlds yet. I mean, the joke is, you know, when we were at DST, <laughs> Ryan knew, Ryan Denning, who designed it, 
saying he absolutely knew that the, the uh, discovery had been split up into different bits and had floating the cells and all of that. He's like, and I couldn't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose that's an interesting question of whether, like, um, I don't know if you can tell us this or answer this, but will Hero Collector do and Egomoth do another discovery variant for season three? And if so, how is this, like, separated in the cells going to work? <laughs> can you tell us anything about that? Uh, I think I know how it's going to work. Um, we 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 have a plan. Um, I haven't actually seen it in action yet, so I wouldn't want to commit to how it's going to work. But uh, basically, I think we're going to try to clip the the cells onto the main body of the ship with some transparent clips. Yeah. Uh, is roughly how it works. But I mean, when you look at all those all those ships with separate nacelles, or separate, not just nacelles, but sometimes the sources and the um, the secondary holes aren't connected physically either. Um, you know, we're going to have to come up with a variety of solutions depending on the design of the ship. It's going to be a bit different every time, I think. It's probably a headache for another day. <laughs> I, when we mm. first watched it, I was like, oh, that's going to be a tough one. <laughs> yes, yes. We were like, ah, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> that's interesting. Hmm. I think it's the Voyager J or that one. I don't think it's secondary hull is connected to the primary one, if I remember correctly, or something on it's like disconnected. Yeah. I'm looking at it going, that is going to be a nightmare. I'm, I'm glad I'm not the one doing it. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 J, the Voyager J certainly falls into that category. Um, and I think there are a couple of others actually as well where the, the two parts of the hull aren't connected. I mean, the one that actually scares me is the big uh, rainforest ship. Oh, yes. It's like, oh, how are we going to do a rainforest in a ship? I'm not too sure about that one. That's that's one I don't think we've, we've been so focused on how can we do with the floating cells that we haven't even looked at a rainforest yet. I guess uh, my next big question as well, while I have for you, is the Enterprise D, the big collection or big, the building <laughs> subscription model. Can you tell us about that and how that came apart? Because that is um, launching soon and is also a very big thing for Trekkies to get involved in building their own Enterprise. And of course, the iconic captain picard's enterprise as well could you tell us a bit more about that and how it came to be so there's a, a, a category of of build-up models um you know i did the first one i did was the um the james bond goldfinger db5 um then we did the back to the future delorean um which is you know still going strong it's very popular and then the ghostbusters x01 so the idea of doing something for a, a spaceship uh, was always was always on the cards, and obviously, you know, Star Trek's our our big thing. So there was a bit of a question mark about which enterprise it should be, um, and I think we did some research. I, I, there's always a bit, a bit of a kind of competition between which is the most popular between the original <laughs> series and Next Gen, um, and we did some research that actually showed that on the whole, Next Gen is actually more popular. There are more you know younger people, not old men like me. Um, <laughs> Who, who, you know, for them, Next Gen is the real foundation stone for everything. So it seemed to make sense that we would do the D. Um, and then you go through a, a, you know, a massive development process of working out how it could actually be built and how to make something that's big enough. Because obviously the original thing was, you know, sealed fiberglass yeah. um, around a metal frame with fiber optics in it and all of that. And you can't, um, you can't quite build it that way. <laughs> Um, one of the things that was most satisfying is, I mean, I, I'm very good friends with Dan Curry. We did the big book about Dan's work together. It took that's out last year, but it took us two years to do. Um, and when I showed Dan the model, he was like, oh, that's great. We could have shot that. You know, we absolutely could have shot that. It's, um, you know, it looks every bit as good as the real thing, as long as, you know, we wouldn't use it for absolute close-up, close-up shots, because I mean, the model they had for that, that kind of stuff was um, four feet long um or seven feet long um but he was he was really complimentary about it and really uh, really impressed which i was made me feel good about it you know it's like if if dan sounds off on it pretty happy if they say they could have shot of that as like the biggest compliment you probably could get for, for the model yeah. you've created in a way i'm sure it's gonna look fantastic yeah, when it's in people's hands so i can't wait to see like on twitter people building etc you know when it's mm. finished and everyone's showing off i think that's gonna be a really great moment to see everyone because it's, it's kind of like a personal one if you've built it as well it's a bit like a lego set anyway once you've built it it's more of that personal connection to something isn't it it is i mean it's surprisingly satisfying to build i find um you know you you see it sort of start to take shape um and you you gain a kind of appreciation for all the you know the the design of it and all the uh, 
you know, appreciation of exactly how many windows and how many escape pods it has, and all that kind of <laughs> stuff. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's I've, I've been, I've been, you know, obviously I've been building one, at least started building one myself to make sure that it was all all good, um, and it's been very satisfying. It's been a lot of fun. I think all the ship like um, mega fans out there are going to love the fact when you've got how many windows and how many escape pods, and the wiki people are going to love filling in those details of, again. <laughs> Correct, uh, correct, correct pattern of windows with lights on or off. <laughs> and um, I solve a few arguments online somewhere. How many escape pods did it really have? Yeah, yeah. Well, we did count the escape pods. Uh, <laughs> I mean, but the thing to bear in mind, when I was talking to Dan about this the other day, is that the, the models were actually quite different to one another, the ones mm. they had to shoot with. So, you know, there's the seven foot, there's the six foot and the two foot, um, or 18 inches, Dan said it was more like. Um, and he said that they were all... Um, they were all really quite different to one another um, and that they were very careful to try and only use one of them in, in a particular episode. You know, when you go back to the original series, you, you flip between the design of the cells. Sometimes it's got a sphere on the back. Sometimes it's got a grill. You know, <laughs> it's, uh, they couldn't afford to reshoot everything. Um, and of course, I guess we had the modern Enterprise D in the opening of the card as well, which is a CGI model. I believe that was based off of one of the earlier models. I know there's a bit of confusion about the start of where Ten Ford was based in that opening cinematic there with the card. Uh, yeah, well, Ten Ford, there was no space for Ten Ford on the original I11 mm. 7 foot model. So they had to bodge the windows in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is the thing is, I mean, you know, is one of those models not canon? I mean, you know, how does that work? That's a great discussion for some time online. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I think people get, you know, people get hung up on canon. I mean, you know, the reality is. Mm. Uh, they change the size of the ships from shot to shot, or they you know, equally with the way they they're painted, the different colours. They change the colour. You know, they'll dial the colour up or dial the colour down in a particular shot. So, um, you know, the reality of TV production is not quite as uh, consistent as a lot of people would like. I know one of the greatest ones when it comes to, like the consistency of sizing is um, in Stargate with the BC-304, which is another collection Hero Collector's doing soon, isn't it? That mm. ship seemed to change size every now and again in every other series or episode, which is quite funny to keep track of. And there's always like a large online discussion of how big really is the ship in a way? Yeah, it's a real problem. I mean, the, the biggest um, offender, offender, like the biggest question mark <laughs> in Star Trek is going to be his big thing on Bird of Prey which it definitely exists at three or four radically different sizes. There's no two ways about it. Definitely. That's going to be an interesting one when that comes out. I suppose you, how do you research these sort of things when it comes to doing the magazines? Because your magazines are a great wealth of resource and knowledge for those collectors who buy the models. How does it come down? Like, do you have to make a decision between saying, well, yes, this one's correct or no, this one's correct. Is there any sort of that process that goes there? Well, if it appears on screen, it's correct. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's, that's the reality of it. So, I mean, I did the Haynes manual for the Bird of Prey and I remember talking to Rick Sternbuck about it. I was like, how do we do this? And we just came to the conclusion that Klingons just make, they just like that design and they make different ships in the same design of different sizes. They just, you know, saving time by scaling stuff up. So <laughs> some of them have massive 30 foot hatches on, some of them have six foot hatches on. Um, you know, there is definitely, you have a, a duty to, reflect what's on screen mm. I, I think that's always been my view um and then you try to work it out as best you can i mean they had i have um a list from um one of the vfx supervisors ron moore of what size they made things um bearing in mind that they made it that unless the shot looked better if they made it a different size i guess that's like a definitive list like of things to go by in that case yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, they, you know, because they shot the models separately. Okay. So they had to work out how big they were relative to one another. Um, and then and if you know how big the Enterprise D is, which we do, then you can kind of calculate the sizes for the others. But also, you know, bear in mind you're in space and there's perspective and mm. you, know, you don't have the same perspective cues in space. You don't know how far away you are. Um, so, you know, we do our best, but... Uh, Sometimes the show doesn't allow you to do more than, than it allows you to do, I guess. 
a line has to sort of be drawn somewhere sometimes but it's good to know like you know, the research is done there and i think that's what a lot of fans appreciate as well particularly star trek fans they love that sort of element of detail i know i like it when it comes to like well, hang on that doesn't look quite right you know let's go and research a way of how this is meant to look etc and stuff like that people love that sort of thing yeah i mean i think we we definitely um you know we're blessed in having access to the CG models for a lot of the Star Trek ships, certainly all the new ones. Um, and we're able to, to at least see all of the detail that's there on the original. I mean, you know, one of the sort of nicest moments when we were way back in the day on the, the Star Trek original collection was we did a, a freighter from Enterprise and there was some text on the, the freighter pods that you hadn't been able to see on the screen. Okay. It was there. But you hadn't been able to read it, but we were able to put it on the model. And then people are looking at this tiny model in their hand and looking at it with a magnifying glass and realize what it says on each, you know, you know, on each of the cargo pods, which is, and it was there in the episode. You just couldn't really see it. I love that sort of like so, bit of detail that comes to it. Like one of the best enterprise models here at Collector produced was um, the NX Refit or the Columbia class, mm -hmm. as I think it was called in base can as well. I've got one on my shelf right now. If we could have seen it in enterprise, it would have been fantastic to see the evolution between like the original NX-01 to the Columbia class, aka refit, and then obviously to the Constitution class later down the line. Obviously, it's sad we didn't get that one, but thanks to the model, we we can see that clear evolution in a way. Yeah, and I think I mean Doug. Doug was you know um, Doug Drexler who designed it. It's very much his baby. You know, it it creates that link between the eras. Uh, it really does fill in the space. So, you know, I think it's one of those ones that if if there's ever opportunity for it to turn up on screen, I'd, I'd, I'd like them to take that for sure. And I know Doug would, would too. Um, yeah, I mean, the the one of the great pleasures for us has been able to to do those kind of concept ships or those things that are you know the missing the missing bits in Star Trek. Um, and I I personally have taken great pleasure in that. Um, we've got um, one of the rejected concepts for the Defiant coming up Ooh. soon, which is pretty cool actually. It's much more of a it's even more badass than the Defiant. <laughs> Oh, was it the um, special edition Hero Collected? Was it the Cloak Defiant as a bit of a, a bit of a joke? It was released a while back. <laughs> yeah, we had years of people asking us to do Cloak Ships. So it's like, yeah, here's an empty box. Um, <laughs> easy joke. Um, no, the, so we're doing, um, it's, it's the USS Valiant. Oh, okay. Uh, which is one of the concepts it's in, Arts of Star Trek. Um, it's a much more kind of um, extreme, kind of hot rod version of Defiant. Very nice. That, uh, done in the development phase and it's cool it's a it's a, it's a nice little model it, 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 you would not have been disappointed if that had been the Defiant I'm sure many fans uh, are going to appreciate that when it comes out because I think uh, the Defiant is obviously a fan favourite and I know the DS9 hand manuals just come out um, by Hero Collect as well and yeah. there's that lovely yeah. IGN video of like the preview video of the Defiant which looks fantastic as well yeah that was um, yes that's it's quite long I, mm -hmm. I was like oh that's a bit long but now uh, people will enjoy seeing it um yes yeah, so it was difficult we wanted to everybody always wants a bit of video to promote promote a book um and obviously we we work from the original cg models so the opportunity to add in um a bit of video for it was was there um there are actually three of those kicking around so yeah you might have to do a little research there's uh <laughs> there's the defiant is in one place and deep space nine itself is in another uh i think actually deep space nine is on track movie and then we have for ourselves cat back to the runabout i need to find that one i've not seen that one yet yeah there's a qr code on the book Ooh, so okay. when you get a qr code on the book it will take you to a page uh in the hero collector site which has the runabout in them. Ooh, that's gonna be some hunting for some fans well ben i'm glad i've catched you today and i'm glad i've asked you like all the questions i had and we've got some great discussion out regarding hero collector and the upcoming collections as well for Star Trek ships i think it's gonna be fantastic when people get them in their hands as well so thank you for your time today it's been really appreciated it's a pleasure. Always a pleasure.